365 Radio. 254-339-1122. Real quick note, offensive line. Doesn't have to be a quick note. Can carry over to the rest of the hour. Then Steven and also T-Rex will join us. Offensive line. The most talented player among everybody they have is Micah Mascua. And it's just a matter of when you talk about physical, you talk about talent, you talk about technique, you talk about all of the intangibles, gift talent-wise, gifted-wise. He's got it, but he's got to understand it with making sure, growing up a little bit, and also even the playbook and things like that. But he could be the key to the whole thing because he has the ability, if he gets it, and the clock is ticking, of course, to play at the next level. That's that's something that I kind of got some of that uh, in the last couple of days. Also, Gall has solidified that middle, the kid from Buffalo. But that still doesn't mean that Grant Miller's like, well, whatever happened to him? He's one of those that feel they feel like he could play both positions. You have a few of those. Randy Clements had some of those. Most of his transition, though, came in the offseason. Don't yet just give up the boat on Xavier Newman. Yes, I know we've heard that before. Uh, Galvin at left tackle. But John Carlo Valentine, got a, you got, your clock is ticking, young man, and you have the ability, and the matter is, do you understand that your clock is ticking? I'm sure he does. They've had conversations with him. But Mascua and Valentine might be the two most talented, gifted offensive linemen they have, but right now you can't count on them until they show it sometime in August and in the fall. Well, Mescu is a younger player, so that's good news, is that he should be around for at least three more years. Uh, he was a redshirt freshman uh, during spring ball, so uh, really four years uh, if he wanted, I suppose. But, yeah, I mean, you know, you would hope having a fifth-year senior, actually, a yeah, a fifth-year senior because he never got the redshirt, Xavier Newman uh, would be beneficial to you, but uh, he did not have the best year last year. Uh, I think as much of their problem last year was they weren't in shape. They did not look like they were physically imposing in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the one in eleven year, they had some guys that looked okay, but then by the time Matt Rule really sunk his teeth into the team, you saw their bodies change. You saw them get bigger. You saw them get stronger. You saw them get faster, and you saw them get a lot tougher. And you know the the Texas game is like example number one of just absolutely imposing your will on somebody and not having to beat them 50 to nothing but be leading by two scores and have it feel like 50 to nothing because you're kicking their ass so bad that's what that texas game was three years ago and that's what they had turned into and then last year with the coaching change and a lack of spring ball and all those things that we've talked about ad nauseum they got roughed up by teams last year now granted they had come off a four-week covid pause with no practices and had to go play like a team who's played four weeks in a row and so that was disadvantageous. But, um, yeah, I think the physical side of things is as much of what was missing last year as, as anything else. And, and hopefully that's something that gets corrected or has been corrected this offseason. Yeah, Matt Rule stepped into a situation where he wasn't uh, – he didn't have – it wasn't like the guys weren't talented. It's just they weren't – there was no one. I mean, there was only six guys when he walked in the room. And you have to have freshman play and everything – that, that happened with that. So, But then when you have no guys and, and three of them are leaving after that year, you've got a problem. I mean, you've, you've got to rebuild it up from, from scratch. And that's where I think we, you know, in addition to the fact that they were out of shape, you kind of saw that was, the, that was the comeuppance from not having guys two years ago. Well, there's no question that uh, some guys needed to lose some weight. Some guys needed to gain muscle weight yeah, they along just, the way during the offseason. And they feel as if they turn that corner yet – they still have to learn to play one way or the other where they are weight-wise. Yeah, they just weren't really physically all that impressive last year. And again, I know there's pause after pause and having had COVID, I, I know how you feel afterwards. And I know I still kind of feel it sometimes even now, uh, just being tired or whatever. So, you know, having to play a football season, starting and stopping like that, I'm sure was was really difficult and, and affected weights and things like that. But yeah, I mean, I think just a, getting better physically once again will be uh, huge for this team, but I mean, it's good to hear about Mescua. Um, I mean, for Newman, this is it. There's no more bonus year, so uh, hopefully he has the best year of his Baylor career. You know, Casey Phillips, there's a lot of talk about him, and that's great, but, you know, talk is talk. Talk's not walk, and, and you know, they need some of these young guys to walk. They need Valentine to walk. They need Phillips to walk. They need these guys to 
to, to do more than just be potential at this Most point. Most Jeffrey, Khalil, Keith, and, and getting the feeling from just doing my uh, conversations about the offensive line, getting the feeling that this is not a talent issue. It is a uh, getting it together issue to, to either be mentally or physically or both better, stronger, uh, more violent in, in a football way and or understanding the responsibility of being a scholarship football player. Well, I think there's probably a lot of lack of confidence, too, with this unit, and uh, that's probably something that uh, Eric Mateos is going to have to work on and build back up as well because, I mean, when you've been playing offensive line for Baylor the last three years, you probably don't have a whole lot of confidence. The one negative out of all this is the fact, and then to the calls, is that we've heard this now for almost five years. Although that team in 2019 was physically, they they were able to maul some people and not not like overtake it, but they were physically good enough to do that. And it worked with what their style was, complementary with their uh, defense, is that uh, that they did not have many practices back to back where all of them were okay, where all of them were healthy, all of them were there. And that again is something that just you know can set you back no matter the talent level or the expectations. The perception, though, get this feeling that the perception of what we think of the offensive line is not quite what they think it is inside that football office. That's good. Then that's that's a good thing. That's not just like this is getting it from where it's not just trying to like hey that we're not. This is the the perception. They are better inside that offensive line room than people may realize, and that's why Eric Mateos, Jeff Grimes, and others have some work to do. Steven.